Hey, what's going on, bud? Welcome back to the channel. Glad to see coronavirus hasn't gotten you yet. Hey, if you're new here, go ahead and hit subscription and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on uh, the new and exciting stuff coming out of uh, Hat and Beard's channel here. Uh, if, if, if you like, uh, like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Maybe drop a comment. Drop a comment if coronavirus has hit your town yet. And uh, let me know if you're still living healthy. And if you are, what 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 precautions are you taking? Um, I know that I've sung a lot of the ABCs to myself while thoroughly washing my hands. Uh, lots of bleach water being slung around. Lots of bleach water. Uh, I mean, you might as well say that I've gone full Bankai on, on my bleach. Uh, that's a super dorky joke. But hey. In this video, you guys, uh, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna talk to you about some things, and then we'll get to the picks. Uh, you know, so just, 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 just bear with me while we, uh, while we go over this real quick. Now, um, real quick, I wanted to talk on the subject of the coronavirus, or as I like to call it, Corn Dog 19. The corn dog 19 virus that has taken the world in a pandemic it's got everybody freaking out and taking all the goddamn toilet paper off the shelf look man i don't care you can take all the toilet paper you want i i got plenty of toilet paper i got plenty of baloney worst comes to worst i'll wipe my ass with baloney i will go and scoot around on the ground i don't care but hey listen in all seriousness guys this is not something to be taken lightly this is not the time for panic. This is the time to keep our heads. This is our time to think. I admittedly was not concerned about coronavirus when it first burst onto the scene. Um, what really made me uh, start to take this serious was uh, when you have major corporations that make billions and billions of dollars like the NBA like the NCAA canceling not canceling suspending entire seasons March Madness is on the cusp at least at the time of this recording March Madness is on the cusp of being canceled this year March Madness is one of the single largest money-making machines in the United States. The NBA has suspended the season because of the coronavirus. The NBA makes money hand over fist. The NFL has canceled their owners meeting. Just so you understand, the NFL is one of the single largest money-making machines in the history of humanity. When you put the NFL shield on a product, it makes money. It makes somewhere along the lines of, I heard between 30 and 40 billion with a B billion dollars a year annually. And when you have old people with billions of dollars making decisions that impact their billions and billions of dollars, you know that something is seriously going on. I'm not saying that this is the time to panic. This is the time to do the opposite. This is the time to be, to be alert. This is the time to be a human, a human, a humanitarian. This is the time to be right with one another. This is the time to wash our hands. This is the time to use hand sanitizer and bleach water. You know, do the toe tap thing, guys. Uh, don't be shaking hands with strangers. But all of this being said for the sole purpose of, I have to preface this video that at least with the time of my recording this, 
Uh, the XFL season has not been suspended, though we do have uh, a barring of fans to be admitted to the Seattle game, which is understandable. Seattle has uh, been kind of a sh not such a great place, and I imagine that the virus will be running rampant through there. I mean, it's it's not a matter of if, boys. It's a matter of when. We're, you're, it, it's just inevitable at this point. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't know if the XFL, okay, so if the XFL s maintains their season, it wouldn't be profitable to not have people in the stands. However, if you suspend the season, are you able to come back from that? So Oliver Luck and Vince McMahon have, uh, and others, but obviously they're the two main staples. They have some deciding to do. Um, we're, we're seeing cancellation of festivals, uh, conference, basketball conference championships or tournaments are being canceled. Spring games, baseball is being canceled. Everything's being canceled. Everything's being canceled. I kind of wish, I kind of wish that uh, Corona, Corn Dog. I kind of wish that Corn Dog Nineteen was a little bit more uh, picky than the people that it killed, so that we could say, "Ah, see, it's this. It's racist. It's sexist. It's whatever. Cancel it. <laughs> Cancel it. Take to Twitter. Cancel it. Cancel coronavirus. That's it. I'm canceling it. Cancel cor hashtag Corn Dog." 19 canceled so uh you know anyway take these picks for what they are worth uh if the xfl pushes on great if not shit but uh thanks for thanks for just listening to me play. just just kind of you know yam around about that for a little bit so just for god's sakes guys wash your hands jesus christ game number one we got the houston roughnecks traveling to the new york guardians um, I think we all really know how this game's going to shake out. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Houston's going to walk right into New York and absolutely lay the hammer down on the Guardians. So New York can take all that momentum that they've been building this past couple weeks and uh, they can try and capitalize on that as best they can. But I'm pretty sure that we're going to see uh, why P.J. Walker continues to dominate, dominate the XFL. And is the clear front runner for the league MVP. So give me the Roughnecks over the Guardians in game number one. Game number two, we see my St. Louis Battlehawks travel down to Tampa Bay to square off against the rough and tumble Vipers. Uh, I think we all know how I feel about Tampa Bay, how I felt about Tampa Bay all season long, despite uh, looking like they had something, a little bit of fight in them against DC in week four. They turned around later. Uh, got, didn't lay an egg, but took the L out in L.A. last week in week five. Um, you know, the Battlehawks also coming off a tough loss at D.C. last week. They continue to stay on the road. But I look to see the Battlehawks get it right against the Vipers. Um, I don't think the Vipers offense matches up well against the Battlehawks defense. And I just think that this is going to be a chance for Jordan Tyamu to get it right and show NFL prospects or show NFL scouts that he is a legit NFL prospect. So give me the Battlehawks to trounce the Vipers at home in game two. The third game of the weekend, the first game on Sunday, we see the Dallas Renegades traveling up to square off against the DC Defenders. DC coming off a hot win over the Battlehawks last week in a defensive uh, shootout, I guess you could call it, if that's what you want to call a defensive game. Um, and Dallas is trying to get it right with uh, Outlandry Jones. So this game seems to have all kinds of boring written all over it, as I don't, I don't think that Dallas's offense matches up all that great against DC's defense. Um, I also don't know though how DC's offense is going to operate if it's going to be old 12 gauge or if it's going to be old uh, Gangliatron there, Tyree Jackson running running the offense. So. 
I'm I, I I'm not not I'm not not interested in this game, but I'm also not super interested in this game. Uh, I guess eh, you know I don't despise either one of these two teams per se. Uh, it'd be a lot it'd be a lot more interesting if it was uh, what we all thought at the beginning of the season, where maybe Landry Jones and Cardale Jones are going to be running you know one and two for the MVP race. But that is evidently not situation as Cardale Jones continues to struggle with some type of weird head game going on after the LA game and obviously Landry Jones has uh the knee of a rubber chicken so I mean that's no slight to him I mean knee injuries are, are shitty so unfortunately we have a dud of a game for our opening game on Sunday I guess if I had to pick a team I'm gonna say uh chalk another W up for the DC defenders to hold it down at home against the Dallas Red. Game number four, possibly the most interesting setup we have as the Seattle Dragons have already come out and said that they will not be allowing an audience to view the game from the stadium. So this game will be 100% televised. Uh, Obviously, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the coronavirus has taken hold everywhere. Specifically, the uh, what is it? The coronavirus, the something nineteen. I've been calling it corn dog nineteen. To be honest with you, um, I'm not trying to make light of the situation, and uh, I think my earlier statements kind of show where I'm at on the whole thing. Um, so there will be no one in the stands to watch this game, and Seattle has always looked out of sorts, uh, be it under. Brandon Silvers, or even with B.J. Daniels. Now, I have said in the past that B.J. Daniels gives them a much better chance to win. Um, really, what I think Seattle's biggest problem is Jim Zorn and his big red nose. Yeah, I, I, dude, I'm sorry, bro, but your big red nose just gets in the way of you calling plays. And until you can just maintain non-red nose the whole game, is the, I'm telling you, if you guys watch it, as soon as Jim Zorn's nose turns red, Seattle loses it. Uh, and LA is uh, coming off a nice come from behind victory where uh, Josh Johnson was like, no, I'm the captain now and proceeded to dominate on offense after he gave Norm Chow the old Budarewski on his offensive plan. So I think we know exactly where this game is heading towards. We're going to hear a lot of grunting, a lot of pads clacking, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, interesting sounds that if you've ever played sports, you know because of practicing. It's it's basically like a like a like a practice. So, uh, all nonsense aside, I'm gonna say, give me. I mean, I want to pick LA. I do, and I don't like Jim Zorn. Both of those things being said. Give me the Dragons to beat up on the LA Wildcats in an empty stadium. No 12th man or whatever they call it up in Dragon Town there. Uh, so yeah, that, that'll be the, my, my final pick of the weekend. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Seattle Dragons. Hey bud, you made it to the end of the video. Dude, I'm so glad you stuck around this long. If, if you're super new here, bud, you know... I'd really appreciate it if you'd uh, if you want to continue to to see the weird content that comes out of out of my face. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and click the subscription button. That'd be super super cool. And if you really like this video in particular, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. Um, we're gonna be trying to move into covering more NFL action, but with all of the global uh, stuff all the stuff that's going on you know i don't really know what we're going to be able to do here so i think we might just spend more time just talking man just talking i don't know if you've got something that you'd like to either see me talk about or hear my take on uh you know as long as it's not too ridiculous obviously uh you know let's let's keep it a, a little bit above board here we are trying to grow this channel. I would like to make some money eventually, but we're new, so. Uh, yeah, go ahead, like I said, go ahead and uh, 
give a th- give a thumbs up. This is the longest outro ever, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Hey, look, look, guys. All seriousness, seriousness. You know, try and stay safe out there. Uh, the worst thing that we can do right now is to panic. Uh, keep, keep, keep your heads, man. You know, think before you act. Uh, the only way we're gonna get through this is to maintain some semblance of civility. So, you know, don't sneeze in each other's faces. Don't, you know, eat bat soup. And for the love of God, for the love of God, bud, try and remember that I've been Haddon Beard and you've been a tuna sandwich. See you next time. Bye.